And uh, I, I couldn't be happier if TV would die because, number one, you know, I, I pay a pretty fair amount to get a lot of variety in terms of my cable yep. access and movies. And every time I go on there, there I mean, I got to tell you, there's nothing on there. I mean, just give me the ability to, like, get what I want and I'll pay for it. Uh, you know, and give me the ability to get obscure documentaries, give me the ability to dial up foreign films, some concerts, and some maybe some archival sports footage, and I'm a happy camper, and I'll pay for that. And I think, ultimately, don't you think that that's where it's going? Absolutely, that's where it's going. And, and you know, right right here, uh, I'm in near Pasadena, California, and I've got a pretty hot DSL set up. But once they get that fiber in there, you get this Fios or the other one, I don't know what the ATN was, but once you've got onto fiber optic, this stuff is is rocket stream pipeline you could take high definition video in surround sound and just it'll just it'll just come squirting right into your computer so cool. well, i'm ready for it i've got my hard drive hooked up to my flat uh my flat screen and uh yeah i'm, I'm ready i'm ready to play so let's uh, let's shift to take a little shift here alan and sure. uh did you just get back from a uh, a sound healing conference back east you and i were talking about that when we we're putting this together did that happen absolutely this was uh this past weekend the organization is called SAMA, S-A-M-A, stands for the Sound and Music Alliance. And, and as you and I have talked, in the, it's sort of in the background, so something for love, not for money, I've been very interested in using music for healing and wellness and spiritual enhancement. And it's nothing new. Shamans have been doing this for thousands of years. You know, the medicine man had his little thing with his rhythms. And, and, and you know, I, I, this whole thing wants to come from, from incense and and beads to real medicine where it's repeatable and and you could you could get a prescription to go get music therapy and there's tremendous strides uh, and it, this was this this was a very select group of people there's probably about 70 people all hand picked as the charter membership of this organization and I encourage anybody who wants to check this out uh, just search SAMA on the uh, on the web and you'll you'll get to at least a blog and, it, and it's an emergent group but uh, luminaries like uh, Joshua Leeds, Lisa Ruffell, uh, several of the, of the all the authors that have been writing the books on music therapy. Um, there was a lady named uh, Barbara Hero, who was uh, one of the great mathematicians and mer- merging mu- mathematics and art and music together. I met her, uh, so it was really a thrill. And uh, as, as we talked about, uh, one of my expertise is in, and I've been studying frequencies. You know, there, there are obviously, like anything, there are good frequencies and bad frequencies. And so a full understanding of this and a full database for people to pull from would really enhance the ability to use music for your, just to think about your whole sound environment. How much, what sounds are you bombarded by all day long? And, and, and some are destructive and some are, are good. That's why we sit down and we put our iPod on and we listen to tunes because that's the, the smoother, the icing over top of whatever else we've gone through all day. So we have sounds that we can hear, and obviously we resonate towards sounds that are soothing or appealing to us. And, and, and to, uh, to be honest with you, uh, that's not the same for everybody because everybody operates with their own sort of set frequency or vibration. Uh, some people really enjoy hearing, uh, you know, um, uh, wrecking balls against the side of a building. Or I mean, some people get off on that stuff. I mean, I don't necessarily get off on it, but some people do. So we choose the sounds in our environment, hopefully, that we resonate with. But what about the sounds that we can't hear? What about things like EMFs and ELFs and scalar waves? What do you have to say about those? Well, you know, the, the, we, I had a, a, a very big meeting on Madison Avenue about products and frequencies. And, you know, this whole cell phone business is going to be like the cancer was with cigarettes. Uh, it's really suppressed that the, you know, the rise in brain tumors and stuff like that, and they're going to keep this off radar. But eventually it's going to come out that these these frequencies that we're exposed to throughout the day, and, and, and here you are, you know, putting one right on your ear, uh, right next to your head, and this is a radio with high frequencies. Uh, of course, you can't hear it, but it's, it's penetrating your, your, all the cells of your body, and it's creating resonances that we're not aware of. Right. And, and this, this, is, this is a kind of a scary thing coming up to us, you know, and, and you know, they're going to put um, on the power lines, they're going to now put Internet signals on the power lines. And, and communications, uh, you know, using that as an additional grid. Um, and who knows what that's going to do, or, you know. Uh, back to the frequency study, you know that that 60 cycle is very harmful. Right. The frequency of our, our power. They use 50 cycle in, in Europe, and it's much safer. It's much more harmonious. 
The perfect one would be about 53 cycles. That actually starts lining up with, with positive brain waves and enhancement. Nobody ever looked at this stuff until way too late, but I think as part of our, our next decade, we've got, to, we've got to review this whole issue of sustainability, and frequencies is a big part of it. So um, do you think that we have the ability now to go back in time and basically say, hey, you, got, you guys got to re-rig this stuff. You've got to back engineer this because uh, it's making people sick. I mean, do you think that, that there will be a, a, a business or, or, or at, the, at the most a moral imperative to do this? I mean, how do you see this playing out? I, I do see that, that uh, we've got to find organizations that are willing to support the studies to stand on their own two feet. I mean, we know, you know, the whole Royal Rife scenario, the guy had frequencies that cured cancer and they suppressed him. Uh, there's, you know, we, we live in a world where fluorescent lights are bad, but LED lights are good. So, so there's a certain amount of technology that will be phased out and, and sort of quietly go away and it will be better for us. Uh, you know, just, just, just everything, you know. And, and you know, there, there was a whole article I saw talking about these electric vehicles and, and saying that there was, Frequencies coming off the electric motors of the, of, of the in the cars. So there's maybe another whole thing in electric vehicles that we in electric vehicles we hadn't thought about, just trying to get away from the oil. We may step into a new thing. You're right, right. So we'll be immersed in these uh, electrical fields no matter where we go. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's but, there's a way there's a way to stop it. It's called a Faraday shield. Right. Literally, you make a um, a conductive screen box completely around whatever room you're in, and you and you ground it. And that will actually block, block the, the frequencies. And I think, back to this wellness thing, I think hospitals and, and places of psychiatrists office should consider these, these things, to giving somebody a, a place to get away from everything. I mean, this, this is why we go high on the mountain into nature. Right. Uh, or, get, or go to Hawaii where, where it's, you know, the, the levels of this stuff are much lower. And we don't know why, but we sure feel better. It's true. I mean, you know, and this has all been sort of, you know, it's like the, uh, the, the frog uh, that is in the uh, – pot of water that gets turned up incrementally and next thing you know yep. the, the pot is boiling and we started off with you know uh, mostly electrical fields based on you know, towers electrical towers you know cancer clusters or whatever you want to call them and uh, relay stations and for the most part you know that was pretty much it you had radio stations with mostly analog signals and then you know probably in the last what 25 or 30 years with the advent of digital I mean we've been uh, slowly, but not even slowly, rapidly immersed in a growing field of, of digital noise and um, bombardment of frequencies. And it's changing us at a, at a genetic level, don't you think, Alan? Absolutely. You know, when you think about the cells of your body, there's a container, which is the membrane, but then there's a liquid in there. And uh, based on some very groundbreaking work by a fellow named Dr. Emoto, he proved that you could... Uh, freeze water and the water would reveal in the crystal the frequency content or the, or the characteristics of that liquid. Well, here we are, 70, 80, 90 percent salt water, and, and we retain these things. I mean, just think, think of, you know, this is all part of the thing. You, you know, you, you go into some, let, let's just say you have an argument with your wife for a second. When you walk out of that room, you're still resonating. It doesn't go away. Yeah. You know, it takes a while to, to chill, and just think of the poor five-year-old that's in a family that's getting a divorce and mom and dad are fighting and then he's yelling and screaming and he's crying and now that he's got to go to school he, he doesn't just turn that off right uh, you know we, we, we're retaining so much uh, I'll say negative harmful frequencies and this is what causes disease I mean what is disease disease is disharmony health is harmony you find yourself in a situation where when li life is a groove um, you know, you're happy with your life, you, you're someplace that's away from the, the madness, you're healthier, you live longer. Right. So there's a whole, whole thing we could, we could break out into, just what, what, is, what is the future of, of medicine or non-drug medicine? Because, you know, it, I, I was draw, draw, grown up on, on the take a pill for everything generation. Right. You know, and now my kids have a totally different attitude and they're on my case dad don't take that stuff don't worry. look what's in the food you eat you got to eat natural and you know what they're right yeah yeah well don't you think the reverse can be true too as well let's say you had a wonderful experience with your wife 
and you and you walk out of the house, and all of a sudden you're dealing with this level of um, un, un, unheard static noise, and it's knocking you off of your center so that that experience that you had that deeply resonated with your heart or your or your head or whatever is now uh, a lot more fleeting and doesn't really get inside of you as deeply as, say, maybe it did 25 or 30 years ago. I mean, can't the same be said for that? Absolutely. No, I, it, it, it certainly the reverse is true. Let's say you really created a nice home environment and you and your wife are happy and, and the you got the little baby, and it's just one of the great times in your life. And then you got to get in the car and get out there amongst all the other people that are very angry and the horn honking, and you're in a big city, and and you know all this stuff is around you. You can hold on to it to the best you can, but eventually it overcomes you. Right. So you you want to be able to recharge throughout the day. So that's why you call your wife again and say, "Gosh, it's a terrible day, honey, but I really had a great time this morning." And you remind yourself of a better time or a better situation. You know, and our, our, our hearts and our minds are so powerful. We really do create our own reality, and we need to take our power back. I, I heard you talking about, uh, you know, people having to grow their own food, um, things like this. Just taking, taking back some simple things in life that we get satisfaction from that we can reflect on and, and use that to, to, to dampen the negative effects of, of the other stuff that happens to us. Well, one of my favorite people in the field that we're talking about, along with yourself, is Dr. Jeffrey Thompson. And one of the things I've always loved about Jeff's work is his ability to get people on that sound table of his and eventually tune their, uh, uh, what is it, their, their uh, peristaltic and uh, st- uh, diastolic uh, levels uh, so that he can basically bring people into a sound sort of uh, range a frequency where they are no longer in fight or flight. And um, he actually makes a recording of this experience on the sound table with his software so that you can go back and listen to what it sounds like to be in that place of homeostasis. Uh, because most of the time, what we, you and I are talking about, you go out, you're in the world, and, and the, the horns are honking, and people are trying to you know, catch off. I mean, you're in fight or flight. We are in fight or flight mode most of the time and the ability to really simply be is just it's it's harder and harder to come by uh you know with each passing day absolutely you know and we're, we're all caught up in this this economic crunch that they've created uh we've created i can't i can't divorce myself from it i'm in the midst of it uh and i just you know you just go back to a time when you were a kid remember when you were five years old and you had no responsibility and mom and dad kept you in basically a, a family bubble away from all that stuff Right. That was so you could grow up, and, and we need to reflect on that and, and still re- retain a little bit of the child inside of us and not be just angry all the time or afraid all the time. It'll tear us down. We're, we're, it'll cut our life short by, by, by doing that. Yeah, I think that we have to somehow maintain a, a sense of reverence and a, and a sacred place within ourselves in order to, to, to maintain that. Well, some of the work, not some of, but a lot of the work you're doing um, it, it is really um, – based around that. And I think this would, all, this would be a good segue to talk about raw music and um, your experience with uh, uh, natural scale and all that stuff, because I think that if there is a, a tonic out there or, or a couple of tonics, this, this would be right at the top of the list. So let's jump into that. Let's talk about how you came upon this whole concept of you know, what we call natural scale and, and what that means to people. Sure. Well, the, the again, one of these never planned on events, uh, a buddy of mine that worked on a village recorders in L.A., um, I had met him out at Jordy Hermel's studio out, out in Phoenix. He had a, an auxiliary place there. And I was talking about uh, my interest in ancient structures, et cetera, et cetera. And he gave me this book called The Rods of Amun Ra, written by Wesley H. Bateman. And this was a mathematical analysis of the architecture of the Great Pyramid. So Bateman's viewpoint was, all right, whoever built this building very deliberately made everything so long and so high and at a certain angle, and this structure has been there for thousands and thousands of years. It's turned out to be durable. What was the code? What was the mathematical code? So he spent 25 years 